So if you recall from our last video, uh, we were working on the scanner recently, right? And we're going to add some functionality to it this time. This time we're going to complete the ICMP uh, part of this, right? So we're basically creating a whole new file copied from the other one, right? So copied from our decoder with most of the same code, but we're adding some extra sections here to accommodate for ICMP requests, right? Because before we're just decoding... Um, what was it here? Yeah, just the IPv4 uh, packets, right? But, um, yeah, based off TCP requests, right? But we also need to be able to accommodate for ICMP and UDP. So in this video, we're going to be building out the ICMP functionality. And in the next one, we'll be building out the UDP functionality, right? So when it comes to decoding the ICMP, just remember that uh, we have to be able to decode the responses um, that our scanner is going to generate from sending the UDP datagrams to closed ports, right? And one thing they definitely point out in this chapter is that the ICMP messages can actually differ pretty greatly as far as like what's in the content. But uh, there's three elements that are consistent. That's type, code, and checksum. So I will pull up here this little infographic here. This is what the ICMP response for a destination unreachable message would look like, which is happens to be the one we actually care about, right? Because for the purpose of our scanner, if we get this back, then basically that it, you know, it sent a UDB datagram to a closed port, right? And so particularly what we look for is um, the value of three here in this field and also three in the code field as well. So the first uh, seven or first eight bytes rather correspond to the type field, and then you have the code field in the next eight bytes, and a header checksum, unused next hop NTU. And interestingly enough, these last eight bytes right here will actually tell you, they'll confirm the IP source address and IP destination address. So you can confirm, and we'll, we'll add some functionality into this code, as you'll see here, where we confirm that we are, you know, this packet belongs to us, basically, right? that it corresponds to the request that we made. And uh, yeah, so let's just jump right into the code here without further ado. So remember last time we defined the IP class? Well, this time we built out another class called ICMP. And as you would imagine, it's a similar story to, you know, with the TCP request, right? This time, or TCP responses, I should say. This time these fields are going to line up with these ones here for our ICMP destination unreachable response. So the header, you know, this is some basically unpacking the struct here uh, with this notation, as we mentioned in the previous videos, and we're going to just use the, um, we're going to assign the self variables here. So we have type, code, sum, ID, and sequence. And of course, like I said, these all correspond to the fields and uh, they are indexed. So once we use that to unpack the struct and set all of these variables here, uh, we'll go down to the other part of the code we edited. A lot of this is from the last video, so definitely watch that one. Go back and watch that one first if you haven't already. But the code that we added in is starting right here. So if the header protocol is ICMP, then we're going to do ICMP stuff, right? So we're going to print the protocol... Um, the IP header object is going to be an object in this case, right? And the source address as well as the destination address, right? We have a little arrow in between so we can make it look nice visually. And then we're going to print on another line the version and we're going to actually grab the from the header what the version is. So is it IPv4 or IPv6, right? And then the header length, so the length of the header, as you would imagine, right? And then the TTL value, the time to live, you know? And then... Down here is where we're actually calculating uh, when it actually starts, like when the ICMP packet starts. So we want to calculate the offset in the raw packet uh, where the ICMP body lives, and then we'll create a buffer. Then we can print out the both the type as well as the code fields here, right? And once again, an arrow just for a nice little format here. That's pretty much the only changes. We weren't too much involved with ICMP. It was fairly simple. So let's go ahead and get started on demoing that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run it and I got to run it with elevated privileges here. 
And then all I need to do is make a ping request. Here, I'll do ping c1google.com. And what you'll see is that we actually grabbed it. We were able to sniff out the ICMP request in this case, right? So we have... This is all our output here, right? Protocol, because we hard-coded that part, right? And then we have the IP header. Like I said, it's an object. And then IP source address, another arrow, destination address, and then version 4, it's IPv4, right? And then header length would be 5, TTL 105 in this case, ICMP, type 0, code 0. So both... That means basically that both the ICMP header type is zero and ICMP header code is zero in this case. And yeah, I mean, it's really that simple. All you got to do is run the sniffer and then from there make an ICMP request. So if you try to ping something, for example, that would be an ICMP request. So yeah, pretty pretty short video here. Uh, hopefully this one helped clear it up. Like I said, in the next one, we're going to be building out the functionality for UDP. So if you're interested in that, definitely uh, stick around uh, for next week's Black Hat Python video. And definitely go ahead and check out this playlist on screen now for the other Black Hat Python videos if you haven't already caught up. And I will see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.